All right, so uh, we've talked about sponges, uh, the fact that they don't have tissues, which kind of makes them the outgroup of the animal kingdom. Cnidarians that have two body tissue layers, those two germ layers that develop into body tissues. They have stinging cells and a gastrovascular cavity, and uh, they come in, in, in polyps, and they come in medusa uh, body forms. Now we're going to move into other animals. Now what I like about this cladogram here is it shows you when we have the first fossil evidence of these groups emerging. And I want you to see that some of them show up right at the end of the uh, Precambrian, but by the end of the Paleozoic, uh, I'm sorry, not the Paleozoic, but the end of the Cambrian, I want to say, um, we have all of these phyla in existence, which is pretty cool. Uh, they all show up by the end, which is what they call the Cambrian Explosion, when we have this massive diversity of life showing up during uh, that time. All right, so the Cambrian Explosion, here's an example of a Cambrian Ocean showing all these different phyla. We have porifera and arthropods and annelid worms, and pr this is probably a little... Uh, chordate down here, and you know, you can find all these different phyla in this image. So, um, most of the fossils from the Cambrian explosion um, are bilaterians. That's the clade of bilateral animals. Um, these are an and, and these are animals that have a complete digestive tract. So, uh, an alimentary canal, mouth, intestine, stomach, anus, all of that. Um, the first predators show up during this time uh, that we know of anyway. And then what happens is predators are evolving and then defensive adaptations and prey are evolving. It's like an arms race and you get all this armor and things that fossilize really well developing, which helps us to find those fossils because they fossilize really well. So, so uh, uh, predation and, 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 and defense against predation is evolving very rapidly during the Cambrian explosion. One of the groups that emerge uh, uh, just before this or during this time is the Platyhelminthes. This is one of those long clade, uh, you know, phylum names. Phylum Platyhelminthes. These are the flatworms. They have three germ layers in their embryo. So they have three different tissue layers when they're an embryo that develop into complex bodies as they grow up. Um, this group, however, is still has a gastrovascular cavity. It still has uh, a simple digestive system. Um, and it has no actual body cavity. Um, what I mean by that, by body cavity, I don't mean the gut. I mean uh, the cavity where organs are inside the body. These live in marine environments, freshwater environments, and terrestrial environments. A lot of them are free living, and some of them are parasitic, including the tapeworms, uh, which can get up to 20 meters long in blue whales, but can get several feet long in a human being, and uh, other parasitic forms known as flukes that can feed on muscle tissue and blood and things like that. So if we look at this group, it's called an acelomate, meaning it's a group that has no body cavity. It has three tissue layers and no body cavity. So that's what an acelomate is. It has three tissue layers. It has the, um, the ectoderm. The ectoderm is the layer that develops into skin, basically, the body covering. The mesoderm, which uh, develops into this tissue inside, like the, the muscles of the body and things like that. And the endoderm, which develops into the digestive cavity. Those are the three germ layers. And once again, by germ layer, we mean these embryonic tissues that then go on to develop into more complex parts as that organism develops. But there's no body cavity in here with different organs in it. That's that's the weird thing, right? So here's another image of this. Uh, we have uh, uh, an image of, of one of these cut in half. And what's cool about this group is they their mouth is down here. Their, their gastrovascular cavity uh, sticks out with this tube. And this tube is called a pharynx. And it has an opening right there. That opening is the mouth and the anus. Um, another cool thing about this group is they have eye spots. Uh, which allow them to s sense light. Uh, and so they have the beginnings of a brain here and a more complex nervous system than the uh, hydra we saw before. The hydra just have a nerve net. They can respond in all directions. They're radially symmetrical. But this group is bilateral. They have a concentration of sense organs on one end of the body and the beginnings of a brain. 
And here's a picture of one feeding. You can see that pharynx sticking out right there into the food. They feed with that muscular pharynx and they have a branched gut that has lots of surface area that allows for the distribution of food. This group is also flat, which allows them to get gases via diffusion to all the cells of the body. So they have the branched gut, which allows food to distribute throughout the body without the need of, of a heart and pump. And they have a flat body, which allows for the uh, exchange of gases with the environment. And once again, there's that uh, nervous system developing. They have eye spots, they have ganglia, which is a collection of nerves near the head, so kind of the beginning of a brain. But one thing I want to point out is that parasitic flatworms lack eye spots because they live inside of another organism. So not all flatworms have the eye spots. Um, this group is uh, mostly hermaphroditic, meaning they're, they have both male and female reproductive structures. They have some kind of internal fertilization, which is interesting. Uh, and they also are really good at reproducing asexually. Like if you cut them in half, they'll develop into two new worms. If, even if you cut them between the eyes, they'll grow two heads. So they're really good at regeneration asexually. Now, tapeworms are the uh, one of the parasitic um, varieties of flatworms. They don't even have a digestive system. They lost their digestive system through evolution. Why? Think about it. Why? Why wouldn't they have a digestive system? Because they live inside of digestive systems. They live inside your digestive system, for example, if you are infected with tapeworms. And they don't have ganglia. They don't have eyes. They don't have the need for sense organs. They don't have that brain that uh, their free living counterparts have. And they feed simply through absorption through their fat bo uh, their flat bodies not fat bodies their flat bodies um, they have these hooks at the front called a scolex which hooks into the intestines of whatever organism they're in and they have these repeating structures known as proglottids each proglottid each segment essentially has uh, egg producing structures in it sex organs and each one can break off and and be uh, pooped out of the organism and spread eggs out into the environment so other organisms can get infected. So here's an image of one of these. You can see um, here's the head has these suckers uh, that it can these hooks that it can stick on to uh, an intestine with and it has these repeating units of reproductive structures if you've ever had a dog infected with tapeworm sometimes it looks like they have uh, rice in their feces because of these proglottid structures breaking off and each one is full of eggs uh, and so you know the worms hoping that another animal will eat some of that or whatever and get it into their system and then they'll become infected with tapeworms as well so these live inside of digestive systems and basically steal the f some of the food that that organism is eating uh, by absorbing the nutrients. And, uh, uh, and you can get these by eating undercooked pork and other things. So always cook your food well and wash your hands after you dig in the dirt. Uh, now, one thing that's just kind of frightening is that we used to sell these things in magazines as ways to lose weight. You would swallow these um, tapeworms as a way to infect yourself so that way they would eat some of your calories for you. But remember, just because some people sell things and pretend they're medicine doesn't always mean it's a good idea. Uh, during the same time period, you could go to the pharmacy and you know how you can get bear aspirin bear brand aspirin they used to sell bear brand heroin so you know take uh, some of these uh, cures even today when people try to sell you a cure all be skeptical use your science hat and uh, and ask good questions and say hey is this peer reviewed has this been tested by the FDA and check in on that before you uh, spend your hard earned money on weird remedies Okay, so in the next video, we're going to pick up with the roundworms and we're going to work our way uh, towards um, the, uh, the arthropods and the mollusks. So I'll see you then.